This episode of News Jump is brought to you by Gameful and by DraftKings. Hello there, fellow millennials. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, what's that? Oh, you needed a break from the soul-crushing reality of everyday life, so you turned on YouTube to watch us make fun of the news so that it's easier for you to deal with. Because if you didn't have some sort of comedic way to stay informed, you'd actually have an anxiety-induced mental breakdown? What is it that's got you down? Can you figure out which catastrophic scenario everyone is collectively dealing with today? Is it the increased rate of destructive weather events brought on by climate change? Is it rapid inflation with stagnant wages? Student loan debt? A pandemic where 30% of the country is actively fighting against progress? The militarized police force? Or just the fact that it's the 20th anniversary of a terrorist attack that has had untold uh, damages and effects on all of our mental stability since we witnessed it live on television at school when we were younger. Oh, yeah, it's all of those things and more? Well, here's a little silver lining for you. Things have gotten so bad for an entire generation of people in this country that the Illuminati has had to deploy a secret weapon against millennial depression, and it, it seems to have actually worked. Mm -hmm. The plan was simple. Send the original host of Blue's Clues back out there to address the nation, <laughs> calm everyone down, and tell them how proud he is of what they've become. And, yeah. and remind them that if you just focus on your personal growth, everything can and will be okay. And yeah, it wasn't the Illuminati that did it. It was Nick Jr. who produced the video message from Steve as part of the show's 25th anniversary special. But based on how rapidly the video was spread and how heartwarming and sincere all of the reactions have been to it, this video from Steve actually seemed to help people, uh, help snap people out of a hopeless little rut caused by everything that we've all been dealing with for the last 20 years, at least temporarily. Yeah, it was a nice little break to just kind of go, hey, I know you're dealing with a lot, but think how far you've come at least. And I was a little too old for Blue's Clues, so, uh, but I'm, ha I'm happy other people are happy. Yeah, it's, um, it's like one step below our age group, but uh, yeah. it, it is younger a, millennials. It is a message that, regardless of whether or not you were at the specific age group who watched the show when it originally aired, it it was really comforting to hear. As we said, we're, we were just barely a bit too old to be in the Blues Clues crowd, but I remember watching it whenever I would stay home from school because Nick Jr. was the only thing that was on. Yeah. Um, or I would watch it with my younger brother. Uh, it was. Just, we were just outside of it. But for a lot of millennials are younger than us. Mm -hmm. um, and Generation Z, of course, had the the next host of Blue's Clues. But we're talking the about imposter. OG. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was actually nice to see someone from anything two decades ago who had pretty much disappeared off the face of the earth intentionally uh, to come back and check in with everyone. It was actually... Kind of nice. Yeah, he looks great, by the way. And uh, we think that uh, the reaction was so strong because it kind of forced people to stop and take in just how much time has passed since you were young. Because you kind of just keep trucking along on this timeline. Uh, and it also helped realize, you know, how much you may have done regardless of how hard you may have had to struggle. It's really hard to find those moments of reflection the older that you get. And this, it just popped up on people's feeds and hit them like a baseball bat. Ah, oh, I'm old. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we're just going to actually take a little bit of a risk here and show you a bit of the message just in case you missed it or wanted to see it again because you need a little bit of the serotonin boost. Bring me the Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in Steve. The nation is upset. You remember how when we were younger we used to um, run around and hang out with Blue and find clues and talk to Mr. Salt and freak out about the mail and do all the fun stuff. And then one day I was like, oh, hey, guess what? Big news. I'm leaving. Can we just talk about that great because I I realized that 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 was kind of abrupt um, I just kind of got up and went to college and uh, that was really challenging by the way but great because I got to use my mind and take a step at a time and now I literally am doing many of the things that I wanted to do and then look at you, and look at all you have done, and all you have accomplished in all that time. And it just, it's just so amazing, right? I mean, we started out with clues, and now it's what? Student loans, and um, jobs, and families, and some of it 
has been kind of hard. You know? I know you know. And I wanted to tell you that I, I really couldn't have done all of that without your help. And in fact, all the help that you helped me with when we were younger is still helping me today, right now. And that's super cool. I guess I just wanted to say that after all these years, I never forgot you, ever. And I'm super glad we're still friends. Thanks for listening. You look great, by the way. So there were also, of course, no shortage of memes that were created based on the video where people would uh, visually respond to the statement of, look at all you've done and all you've accomplished with photos of neckbeard nests or <laughs> yeah. pics of people looking like trash or whatever. It's like, look how much you've done. Look what you've accomplished. And it's just someone like, Bleh, yeah. what? <laughs> And that's funny, too, because even if you have reached some sort of success in your life, it always feels like we're still fucking up somehow because the end goal or perception of what success is has shifted so much for our generation. Yeah. And uh, the amount of steps on the ladder to get there has increased. Those boomers really greased up that ladder. They really did. Yeah. And then they pulled it up. And yeah. somehow you just and, have to get it back down. And for some reason, also set it on fire. I feel like you've done enough. But... It's so strange. And then they watch us from the top of that bucket, like the crabs. They, the pour, they pour a bucket of uh, hot tar on us anytime we try to get too too high up the ladder. And then they yell at us for falling down. So what is success anymore? Yeah. Uh, just being somewhat happy in whatever existence you're able to carve out, I guess. But yeah, we agree with Steve. We're sure that you've done a lot with the past couple of years, and we hope that you've done well, and we hope you find peace in your own life, because this video got us thinking about how there are a lot of you that started watching us on YouTube when you were like in middle school or high school or whatever, maybe even college, and now you're college, graduated, you're off doing whatever it is you're doing. Some of you might have PhDs. Some of you might have kids of your own. Yeah, or like there's a, can you be like comment that were like, I started watching you on Machinima in middle school, and now I'm in college, and it's just like, Literally Matt Damon aging animated GIF. Yeah. Like, oh, God. <laughs> I, I'm 25 years old now, but I look like I'm 50 because I've been watching this show <laughs> four days a week for the yeah. past seven years. Mm. But, yeah, it does feel weird knowing that uh, we've all kind of grown together without even really knowing each other. But, hey, we're proud of you. Yeah. Even if you are just sitting there watching this show with your stomach hanging out and a beer in one hand, a bowl of ice cream in the other. We're still proud still of you. Still proud. You know what? You were able to sit on a couch and afford a beer and an ice cream. Yeah. You're doing fine, baby. Some people would kill for that couch. <laughs> yeah. Unlike the John Mulaney discourse, the parasocial relationship with Steve from Blue's Clues is good. Yeah. For Cause, now. Because he's not real. Yeah, he's not. He's a character. And he literally quit the show, I think, because he was going bald. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go. Uh, no, I think he, like, self and then he he was in a band. He did a bunch of other oh. stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's fine and uh, he's happy for you. So good it's good to, to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Now, okay, we're all feeling a little bit better. Good. Let's get on with the news. And <laughs> I feel like we kind of like buried this one a little bit. Maybe glossed over it in the first episode we did this week because yeah. it is very bizarre. So it bears repeating. And we are sorry for repeating it, but it feels like. This is going to be either one of those moments that is so boring and pointless that no one even talks about it after it happens, or it's the spark of weeks worth of discourse online. I think it's the latter. You, you can't just let this guy freestyle for hours and hours and hours without getting some, some real nuggets. Counterpoint, he has been freestyling at uh, recent uh, speaking events. And it's boring, pointless, same old rehash I guess, garbage. I guess you're right. Yeah. And even like his followers are like, Getting tired of him playing the classics. New material. Yeah, it's like, every, like sure, you go see uh, Guns N' Roses' 50th uh, final tour to see to hear the hits, but after a while, it's like, all right, we've heard Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah. Can you play something else? Um, this is your reminder that today, on the 20th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attacks, Donald Trump is doing hours of live commentary alongside his son, Don Jr., for a pay-per-view boxing match between Evander Holyfield and Vitor Belfort. Previously, we mentioned that, okay, maybe Trump would look uh, at the date and maybe back out of the event upon realizing oh, that he didn't understand that it was taking place on 9-11, but it is still moving forward. And according to TMZ, the deal was finalized and signed just last weekend. So there's no way he wasn't aware, and there's no chance that he backs out. This man is in. Yes. And in fact, according to that same article, Triller is 
paying a fortune, millions and millions for his blow by blow analysis. And they're even providing Trump with a private jet to take him back and forth from the event. I thought he had his own jet, but I guess. Uh, it's too big for this way. It's yeah. a giant uh, passenger jetliner. So you got to get the small G5. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it appears uh, as though it will not be some remote broadcast for him. He's actually going to be in the building, potentially ringside, maybe? Sounds like a security concern. What's odd? It's the ex-president at a public event that yeah. wasn't scheduled till a week ago. And as we all know, ex-presidents get like full uh, security uh, uh, force with them. So it's like, this is a big logistical nightmare with one week in advance. Yeah. Uh, what's especially odd, though, is at the venue for the bout, that's a pretty, it's a pretty short drive from where Trump lives in Florida. So there's legitimately no reason for him to have a private jet take him there unless, as the article points out, maybe he's going somewhere beforehand for a real 9-11 memorial. Mm -hmm. And if he does, we really hope that he takes a moment during his somber memorial appearance to... Uh, promote his pay-per-view event that takes place later in the evening. Today, we honor the uh, the thousands of lives extinguished on that day in mm -hmm. September, all those years ago. And also, um, later in the night, Triller. You're going to see me and my son uh, talking about a little boxing. <laughs> a little bit of boxing. Uh, a little bit of boxing. You love to see it. Yeah. So uh, it's just a small surcharge. So if you're going to want to watch it. No piracy. <laughs> they don't like the piracy down at Triller. Trump would be the kind of person that does a little wink and nod to tell people to just get in it, to just watch it. Yeah. Uh, that'll be the one way that he inadvertently backs out of the event is Triller is like, no, you can't tell people to do that. You, you're no longer invited. But uh, speaking of promotion for this event, Trump did make a brief appearance via phone call during the press conference for uh, both fighters. It's so ridiculous that when you hear the phone call into the press conference, you're like, oh, this might... It, it, Trump is such a ridiculous voice anyway that you're like... This sounds like a prank call, but mm -hmm. this was a real press event for the fight, and that was the real Donald Trump calling in. Uh, the question that was posed for the former president was, if you had to box somebody on Saturday night, who would it be? And what would the fight look like? Um, here's his answer, and I'll let Elliot take uh, the Trump impression. Uh, I think he does it a little bit better than me. Well, if I had to pick somebody in the world, not just a professional boxer, because I'll take a pass on the professional boxers. That can be a very dangerous subject. But if you said I had to box somebody, I, I think probably my easiest fight would be Joe Biden, because I think he'd go down very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. You know, he once said, I'd like to take him behind the barn, and he'd be in big trouble if he ever did. No, I think Biden would go down within the first few seconds. And I'm going to punch the president. I am going to fight the me, the just former president, I'm going to fight the current president on 9-11. Biden, it's on site. <laughs> I, look, if there was one event that I would pay for, it would be watching two presidents fight on 9-11. Yeah, and it would be an interesting fight. I mean, Biden clearly has the... He's no slouch. He has the athleticism like and health advantage, but... Uh, he does not have the height advantage. I think Trump's got also, several inches on him. That's the thing. It's like when you're carrying around as much, as much weight as Trump, like there is muscle. Momentum, bleed. yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It would be actually probably a close fight. Yeah. It, it would be short, though. It would be a couple punches before both of them are like, ah. Oh, God. My sciatica. Uh, who would be the undercard? Don Jr. versus, uh, I guess, Biden's kid. Yeah. Hunter. That's That would be an interesting Because they're both like kind of on uh, what appear to be amphetamines. Yeah, this is uppers versus uppers, baby. <laughs> <This> is, uh, <laughs> the undercard might prove to be more entertaining. And for that one, no uh, PED testing. You can compare <laughs> no, however the you hell you want. You can do whatever you want. It is open open season. Uh, but yeah, I know that we uh, we risked it showing the Blues Clues video, but um, I, I, I just can't risk it showing the actual call into the press conference, very even nasty. though it's just a press conference. Yeah. If you've watched any of our reporting on Triller, in the past, you'll know that it seems like a, a portion of their business model is suing anyone who shows or sometimes even talks about anything they've produced. Yeah. So we'll just leave a link down below uh, if you want to see their press conference clip. But yeah, it, it's wild. The former president of the United States said that he would like to beat the shit out of the current president of the United States on 9-11 and also that he would knock him out in just a few seconds. Hit him harder than those planes hit those towers. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> did we mention this was taking place on 9-11? Rare win for the divergent timeline as far as absurdity goes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, since we're sort of on the topic of sports, let's go ahead and thank today's sponsors really quick before we get into the rest of the video, starting with DraftKings. 
I've been on DraftKings like crazy this year. Uh, there's for a good portion of the year, there wasn't much else going on except for whenever sports were happening. So yeah, I got into it and I was playing a lot of daily fantasy baseball, which makes me way more interested in games all around both leagues. Uh, it, it's a fun way to get super involved with the sport. And now it's time for the NFL. Da -da -dum, da -da -da. Shh, bum, bum. You're going to get sued by them now. Uh, it's time for the NFL to come busting through the doors to take over for the next couple of months. And of course, DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, has millions of reasons why you should be excited. If you haven't tried DraftKings yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss it. Draft your lineup and feel the sweat like never before. Every run, pass, and catch means more with DraftKings. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching the game quite like having a shot at millions of dollars in prizes. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Get in the game right from your couch. Download the DraftKings Daily Fantasy app now and use code NEWSDUMP. For a limited time, new users can get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes this week. Don't miss out on all this week's action. Enter code NEWSDUMP to get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes with your first deposit. That is code NEWSDUMP only at DraftKings. Make it rain! Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Next up is Gainful. There's nothing more personal than your health. So when it comes to finding the right nutrition supplements to meet your fitness goals, you need a personalized approach. Thankfully, now there's Gainful, the personalized nutrition system that's formulated for your body and goals. Gainful gives you peace of mind that your protein, hydration, and pre-workout supplements contain the finest ingredients specifically for you. Yeah, a lot of the, the stuff when you want to get into exercising. I've been doing a, a bit better lately in the past yeah. month and a half, two months. And it's a lot of confusion with like what you should be doing. A lot of doing. choices, a lot of chemicals, a yeah. lot of uh, amino acids. So What's going on here? Gainful, uh, they, they sent us a link and they had me put in a bunch of information. It was very easy. And they personalized uh, the shipment that was sent. Uh, it's very easy. You take it out and you know exactly what you're doing. There's no uh, wondering about if you're doing the right things for your body. And uh, the, they have a lot of great flavor boosts that add to the flavor of it. And um, there is a hydration thing that's watermelon flavored that's extremely good for post-workout uh, to get you uh, nice and rested up. up. Yeah. Uh, get started by taking the five-minute Gainful quiz. Gainful considers your dietary needs, goals, and unique physiology to personalize your formula. Gainful delivers your supplements with no shipping charge every month, and you can cancel anytime or adapt your plan as needed. All Gainful products are formulated by their on-staff registered dietitians and are backed by pro-level exercise scientists on their science advisory board. Every Gainful customer gets complimentary one-on-one -on -one access to their own registered dietitian, available anytime to answer your questions. Gainful's rigorous quality control process ensures that your supplements only have clean ingredients that you can pronounce, along with zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. Start your personalized fitness journey today with Gainful. To get $20 off your personalized supplements, go to Gainful.com slash NewsDump. That is Gainful.com slash NewsDump for $20 off. Gainful. Personalized nutrition made for your taste. All right, back into the news. And uh, if you were somehow still waiting for that definitive documentary treatment of the Martin Shkreli saga, then we have great news specifically for you. Mm -hmm. Because Blumhouse and the crew behind HBO's The Jinx have just released a trailer for an upcoming feature-length documentary about and called Pharma Bro. Uh, it's scheduled to be released on October 6th, and it, it looks like the documentary covers literally everything from the moment everyone became aware of Shkreli's existence thanks to the scandal where he raised the price of a life-saving drug from $13 a tablet to, mm, I don't know, $750 after acquiring the rights to it. And we've covered him a million times at this point, so you're already well aware. But this documentary, it seems to have uh, even covered the most recent developments, including the love affair that he maintained with a woman who was covering him for Bloomberg News. Uh, she she is, threw it all away. Yeah, she appears in the documentary alongside a handful of other people that are involved in the story. Uh, they... They definitely knew what they were doing because they saved like her uh, appearance and interview for the very end of the trailer. Like, yeah. and we got her too. Uh, it looks fascinating, even though we already know pretty much everything at this point. Um, as we said, Pharma Bro, it's going to be released on October sixth. Uh, it looks like it's showing like straight to VOD rental and purchase services, so mm. it's not like a uh, exclusive to any streaming service. Interesting. It'll just be available to get on wherever you get your VODs. I am very curious about this. It looks. At first, when I saw this being uh, promoted online, I was like, oh, is it going to be like a YouTube doc or something yeah. like that? Which, there's a lot of really good YouTube documentary channels right. out there, but this is like very polished, very high budget, high production value. 
Um, so yeah, very interested in, in this one for sure. I'm excited to relive the whole Screlly saga. Mm -hmm. But in other entertainment news that is certainly going to be interesting as it plays out, CBS has decided in its infinite wisdom to launch a reality competition Based off of activism, yes. uh, complete with a celebrity panel of judges. This was obviously met with disgust and mockery and confusion pretty much <laughs> across the board yeah. with tweets like, so it's literal performative activism and not America's next top activist cry emoji. Yeah. Uh, and there's, yeah, no shortage of people calling out one of the judges from the show, uh, Julianne Ho, for being involved in a show about activism despite the fact that she dressed up in blackface for a Halloween costume a few years back. Yeah. Anyways, the other hosts and judges are Usher and uh, Priyanka Chopra, and uh, here's how the show is described via Deadline. The Activist is a competition series that features six inspiring activists teamed with three high-profile public figures working together to bring meaningful change to one of three vitally important world causes, health, education, and environment. Activists go head-to-head -head in challenges to promote their causes, with their success measured via online engagement, social metrics, and hosts' input. Oh, my God. <laughs> the three teams have one ultimate goal, to save the Earth. No, it's to create impactful movements that amplify their message, drive action, and advance them to the G20 Summit in Rome, Italy. There, they will meet with world leaders in the hope of securing funding and awareness for their causes... Oh, God. Uh, the team that receives the largest commitment is celebrated as the overall winner at the finale, which will also feature musical performances by some of the world's most passionate artists. Um, like, yeah, I mean, sure, the baseline goal here is supposed to be good, I guess. But it's also very easily mockable and ironic. It's literally a big corporation inevitably profiting off of this perceived goodwill. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also funny that someone will lose. And, uh, you know, your activism is just not good enough. Sorry, go yeah. home, bye-bye. So, yeah, maybe there's people that don't even get to go to the G20 Summit. Yeah, this is... Pack your bags. Very fascinating. And uh, I don't know if they've released all the contestants yet, but the ones they've released so far are exactly the kinds of people you would expect where... Uh, the definition of activism is what you would expect from a, uh, you know... Reality Celebrity judge reality competition series. These are people who are like... Like, one of them made an app that lets uh, students uh, transfer their, like, food credits to other students. So they're not actually providing food for anyone. They're just creating a... Uh, they're, uh, they're acting as a middleman so that uh, kids can transfer their, like, also, lunchroom credits to th others. that students. shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. The goal <laughs> should be that children shouldn't have to pay for the food that they're getting yeah. at all, but it, specifically at like school. It's like when people uh, pool together at an office to donate their uh, vacation days yeah. for someone who's getting cancer treatment. Yeah. Like that, wait, hold on, you've missed a step here. The goal should be that someone shouldn't have to take other people's vacation days to get cancer treatment. Yeah. Um, so I can't help but uh, assume that the online response and social metrics part of the voting that gets people further into this competition will be a huge troll farm. Um, yeah. So this is stupid. It's a very, very weird idea. I mean, like, great, you're doing a show about activism, but it just, the whole thing just seems very uninspired and uh, ultimately pointless. Maybe I'm a bad person for assuming that, but... No. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on now, it looks like we finally have an update to the Epic Games versus Apple court case. Took long enough. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looks like it's more of a win for Epic than for Apple, but it doesn't go nearly as far as Epic had hoped it would, mm -hmm. which that's sort of how they framed their case. They shot for the moon. They asked for everything. Yeah. So that when they didn't get everything, they'd still get a lot. Uh, but from Kotaku, Today, a U.S. District Court judge ruled in Epic Games' favor in its lawsuit against Apple. As a result, Apple can no longer dictate that purchases made in apps on its own devices go through the App Store. Apple had previously collected 30% of the revenue for purchases made in Epic Games' Fortnite. Despite representing a significant victory for Epic that reduces Apple's control over how in-app purchases are conducted, it was far from a sweeping win for the game publisher. Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers ruled against Epic on all other counts in the trial. 
Apple, she concluded, is not in violation of antitrust law and does not need to allow Epic or other entities the freedom to create their own stores on Apple platforms. Additionally, Apple is not required to allow Fortnite back in the App Store. Uh, it continues, Apple also denied Epic's request to release the iOS version of Fortnite in South Korea, which just passed legislation that states Google and Apple cannot limit app developers to their own payment systems. In a statement to The Verge, the company says it would allow the blockbuster battle royale back onto the App Store if Epic agrees, quote, to play by the same rules as everyone else. What does this mean? In 2022, Apple can no longer require that online purchases made in games or apps on Apple devices go through its own App Store. It must allow developers to redirect users to their own marketplaces for online purchases. The injunction will take effect on December 9, unless it is appointed to a higher court, according to The Verge. Tim Sweeney, CEO of Epic Games, tweeted out a response to the court's decision, stating, Today's ruling isn't a win for developers or for consumers. Epic is fighting for fair competition among in-app payment methods and app stores for a billion consumers. Uh, this decision has potentially large implications for other online storefronts like Google, which Epic also filed a lawsuit against in July of this year, with Epic Games now being allowed to redirect users playing on Apple devices to its own sites for online purchases thanks to this lawsuit. There could be precedent for developers to be able to do so on other storefronts as well. So uh, despite Tim Sweeney's like, Insistent that this insistence that this wasn't as big of a win you as it is. You can sell V bucks now. It's a very big win for yeah. uh, people on the App Store. Yeah, you, all those V bucks you can now get a hundred percent of the profits from that fake yeah. money. and it goes without saying that uh, a lot more uh, developers, both independent and not, now have the ability to not give thirty percent of their profit to Apple. Yeah, um, it's good. Yeah, so look. He's still shooting for that moon, but uh, at least this is a small victory. Yeah, it's good. I, I think this is great. I, I, I think I, uh, I think, I think Epic did the right thing by taking Apple to quarter over this. Yeah. Anyway, before we leave you today, we do have to send ourselves down to the corrections department. All right, take them away, boys. Because it appears as though a story from last week's episode of News Dump has been refuted by uh, some of those involved in the local news reporting. Mm -hmm. This is all Rolling Stone's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's Rolling Stone's and uh, yeah, a bunch of- And some I, asshole doctor who's just talking out of his ass. Yeah, it's, exactly, yeah. A bunch of outlets picked up on this, but it wasn't- uh, he, he said the thing. Yeah, it was he, a local the, NBC affiliate, yeah. and a lot of our reporting comes from local affiliates because it's not like Internet Today has people on the ground in fucking yeah. Oklahoma getting getting actual journalism done. So, yeah, basically it turns out that according to uh, one of the local hospitals, they are not turning people away because they're jam-packed with patients who are overdosing on uh, the PACE. As we have to refer to it now? The MECT, whatever you want to no, call it. No, it's the PACE, Deli. Uh, so the story came from a local NBC affiliate who had interviewed an ER physician affiliated with local hospitals, but there has been an update and we wouldn't feel right unless we corrected ourselves. So here's an update by way of Insider. The story was widely covered by news outlets, including Insider, which was unable to independently verify Mick Elliott, that's the doctor, mm -hmm. his claims. But Northeastern Health Systems Sequoia, a hospital in Salisaw, Oklahoma, with whom Mick Elliott has worked, released a statement over the weekend, which still appeared on its homepage as of Monday morning, saying it was not treating people for the paste overdoses. <laughs> our correction uh, in there, uh, <laughs> it really says the word in the article. All patients who have visited our emergency room have received medical attention as appropriate, the statement said. Our hospital has not had to turn away patients seeking emergency care. The hospital also said McKelly was affiliated with a medical staffing group that provides coverage for our emergency room, but had not worked at Sequoia in two months. They add that some hospitals in Oklahoma do appear to be under strain, but that can be attributed largely to coronavirus cases. The Tulsa World, which published some of McKellie's claims, wrote in an article last week that three major Oklahoma hospital systems had reported no available ICU beds. Uh, look, sometimes an article is so insane that it actually isn't true, which... Look, this is actually good news. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that people aren't uh, ODing on the paste <laughs> yeah. and clogging up ERs. Uh, the ERs are simply clogged because of the massive amount of coronavirus patients, yeah. which we already knew. <laughs> yeah. um, still, it is important to point out that uh, while the paste is approved to treat things like headlines Did you know human... the maker of the paste received a Nobel Prize? <laughs> it's approved for human use for head lice and... Uh, other things like that, it has no approval whatsoever to treat or cure COVID-19 or its systems. And it can be very dangerous to humans who are just taking it randomly and figuring out the dosage uh, for something that they bought at a store uh, by listening to people online. Just get the vaccine. Yeah. There was even a recent uh, study that was released directly from the CDC that, quote, 
unvaccinated people were 11 times more likely to die of COVID-19 than unvaccinated people. With the Washington Post adding, people who were not fully vaccinated this spring and summer were more than 10 times more likely to be hospitalized and 11 times more likely to die of COVID-19 than those who were fully vaccinated, according to one of three major studies published Friday by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that highlight the continued efficacy of all three vaccines amid the spread of the highly contagious Delta variant. So if you really want to not have to worry about the coronavirus, at least symptoms that could put you in the hospital or yeah. kill you, there's a very simple and very affordable, because yeah. it's free, solution. The pace is cheap, the vaccine's free. Mm -hmm. So get vaccinated. Don't mess around with unproven methods of anything like that, yeah. and, and try to have a normal and decent weekend. Have a normal one. If you've uh, got a bunch of money to burn and you don't care that it's going into Trump's pockets, you can choose chaos and listen to him ramble about boxing for a few hours on 9-11. That's, that's, that's your choice. That's something you can do, yeah. You live in America where you have the freedom to do a lot of things, <laughs> except be unvaccinated while working for the federal government. Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. yeah People actually... in the comments, so mad, so mad. Uh, uh, give it to me. I love it. <laughs> if you don't like it, why don't you move to some other country? <laughs> this is America. And if you want to work for the federal government, you have to be vaccinated. Yeah, sorry. Tough shit. Yeah. Uh, anyways, if you want to watch that episode that pissed everyone <laughs> off, uh, be sure to watch the most recent Tech News Day and uh, also the first episode from this week, uh, which is uh, uh, about how uh, TikTok is now way more popular than YouTube. Pack it up, folks. It's done. TikTok is our new reigning leader. TikTok on YouTube. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.